Hi guys, this is Krilli again with another pen review and today we're going to have a look at a fairly interesting pen from a Taiwanese design studio named Y Studio. And the pen that we're going to have a look at is simply the Y Studio fountain pen. Um, the Y Studio fountain pen, it's a hexagonal pen, is available in a all brass finish, so all brass colored, or in a black finish with brass edges and a brass section and that finish then is simply called brassing. I've been sent this pen whoops, for review by Cohesi, a store in Amsterdam. Thank you very much for sending me this pen for review. I really do appreciate that because actions like this do actually keep the blog running and content coming. Let's have a look at a very, very elaborate box here first. Y Studio does put a lot of care in details and of course, obviously also in marketing of their products. But if it is as well thought through as with Y Studio, I don't mind really recognizing it as good marketing. It is a wooden box that we have in here. You see the wood grain here. We have a sticker on here, F for a fine nib. The pen is also available in a medium nib. It says then the weight of words, the whole, the whole pen, the whole pen's concept rather is about the concept of reminding us of the weight of words, getting off from electronics, more handwriting, more offline experiences and the such. So it really sort of like surfs on this wave or hits the wave of, you know, minimalism, digital detox and all of kind, those kinds of things that you have going on those days, which I think is in general a quite nice movement and the pen sort of taps into that. Portable fountain pen, well, most fountain pens are portable, right? But anyway, brassing for that black and brass finish the only brass pen is, I think, just called brass pen. We then slide out this box here. Really, really nice. Really beautifully made. And we find a nice wooden box with some, I assume it's Taiwanese letters because the company is Taiwanese based. I don't know what that reads here or what it says. If I do have any... Taiwanese viewers or viewers that do speak Taiwanese, please leave me a comment in the message what it says here on the box. I'd be interested in that. Maybe just says brassing fountain pen. I don't know. Uh, y Studio, you then open up the box here like this and you have a, a uh, super nice booklet in here. Stitched, very, very nice feeling paper. It's actually really interesting how, interested how this booklet is made because they were actually folding the paper in all the time. So this is basically folded paper. Uh, and then it's just folded back to the back and then stitched in here. So that then always makes up a page. I'm not flipping or like reading through the whole booklet. I'm just holding it like this for you so you can pause the video and read that for yourself. This here is a little bit about the concept of, you know, going more analog, so to speak, that I've just spoken about. It then talks a little bit about the materials that it's made from brass and that you can manipulate that brass with a sanding paper provided with a pen. Show you that in a minute. You can also read that for yourself. Um, and then you you get a nice pen sort of box and leather straps with it. This is how you apply the leather straps to the pen. Um, this is how you fill and clean the pen. And this is how you can sand the black parts of the pen in order to make it more unique and more you. So that's what you then get here. You get a sanding paper and the idea as said of that sanding paper is that you can sort of destroy the surface of the pen a little bit to make it look rugged, used and all that and to sort of like personalize the pen a little bit more, which I think is probably not everybody's thing, but it's a really nice idea. Uh, something nice to do, a nice gimmick. You then get a little box here from wood, having a the Y Studio logo down here. 
Um, you see that it's really handmade, that each of these boxes will look different. This one here has like some little, you know, wood branch structure in here. And then you can actually open that thing up. And the idea is then that you can put the pen in here. That sits fairly snug in here. That is also really nice. I mean, of course, the idea is that you put that thing here through this part here, like this. And then you have essentially a little carry case with you. And what you then can do is you can take those um, leather rings here, leather straps, you get a black one and you get a brown one with a small brass or copper um, charm or a little thingy that holds these leather straps together. And then you can just like slide it through here, make a knot, and then you just can attach the pen to your backpack, to your messenger bag or whatever. Just have it looking nice. Can open the pen up like this, take it out like this, and then you're good to write, right? That's something that you can do. But then I do also see very many people that don't use this wooden, carriage box here but what they do is to just wrap the leather strap around the pen's cap like this and just carry it like that just as a little nice little accessory which i also do find very nice well there's a lot to talk about <laughs> with this pen because there's a lot going on let's talk about the price for a minute the pen costs 140 euro you may say well this is just a converter pen it doesn't even have a gold nib it has a steel nib in fact a schmidt steel nib so 140 euro is probably on the rather let's say upper scale of what you could ask for this pen but then again it's a brass pen brass is not a very cheap material and then you get all these things that I have just shown you. So I do think that is pretty much, it's it's an okay package, right? Considering all the marketing and the storytelling around it and the sanding paper and the wooden carrying box and all that stuff that you get. And I mean, everything is, it. nothing there feels cheap. It's all executed very well. So I do think it's a fair price. I think I think it's all right, actually. Let's look at the pen itself. The pen itself is a, and this time I will get it right, hexagonal pen, because I do tend to mix up hexagonal and octagonal just because I don't pay enough attention. So this is a hexagonal six-sided pen, and it is black. Um, uh, slightly rounded here, the edges, the edges here are also slightly rounded and they are brass colored. Um, yeah, there's not much to say about it as such. Cap here, also hexagonal, also black. And then this flat ending here that is, of course, used to attach the leather strap um, or to fiddle it through this cap of that box that I've just shown you. I'm not sure if I personally would like it better without that thing would look also cool, I think. But then, of course, you have this whole gimmicky... Uh, let me get that box again. Um, you have this whole gimmicky thing with being able to fiddle it through here and carry, carrying it and all that. All that would then be gone. So, of course, I get it concept-wise. Um, just a little remark, maybe. Otherwise, this is a very sturdy pen. Feels very pretty heavy in hand, of course. It's brass. Says Y Studio here. And, of course... Uh, I do here and there get those comments on my videos. Hey, you're a left-handed fountain pen reviewer. So why don't you make a little bit more comments uh, about things that are maybe interesting to left-handers? Yeah, and it was actually a good comment and I will do that. I'll try to build that into my reviews here and there. Um, I do have specific left-handed content, but I could actually build left-handed things a little bit more in reviews here and there. And here is such a thing, which is, it's of course a pity that as a left-handed person, you have the Y Studio thing upside down, right? Um, as a right-hander, of course, you can nicely read Y Studio. As a left-handed person, it's just a bit awkward. That is why I often prefer uh, when fountain pens, for example, have the logo just flipped around and then Y Studio may be spelled that way or just not have Y Studio set here, just the logo 
um, horizontally, not vertically, or something like that. So that is something that you would then call inclusive design, right? We are already here at the cap. It's a snap-on cap, snaps on really snug with a satisfying little click. I've recently reviewed the Caron Dash Equidor. It's a pen that for some reason reminds me of that pen because they both have the same shape, so to speak. They both have uh, that satisfying click snap on cap. Then they also do both have a fairly, fairly thin section. That pen here does have a fairly thin section. Let me first show you the rounded edges here. That is something that you may want to see, that you might want to be interested in. The pen does have, uh, yes, an inner cap. Just had to hold it a little bit better in the light, but I never had a problem with picking this pen up and it wouldn't write. Of course, you can't post it. It's not designed to be posted. Has the inner cap. As said, the section here then is brass. It is a very, very thin section. And that's another thing, as said, that reminds me of the Caron Dash Ecridor because that has a similarly slim section. Um, here is a Pelican M200 that already has a fairly slim section and the section of this pen here is even slimmer. You already also see the very nice nib, Schmidt Iridium point, but we're going to get back to that nib in a minute. Just wanted to show you how slim the section really is. For me, I can still write with it, but it's definitely on the slimmer side of being on the well, on the lower side of still being comfortable for me. For me, honestly, it's almost too slim of a pen. This here is a Blackwing pencil. And you see that the section is about the diameter of a Blackwing pencil. A bit thicker. Nothing wrong with that. If you like slim and slender pens, such as maybe the Diplomat Traveler or the new Caron Dash 849 or something like that, you may be really happy with that. If you generally like uh, Mont Blanc 149, you'll probably not really like this pen. The nib, really beautiful, gold-plated steel nib, saying F for fine, Schmidt Iridium point. It's a true fine nib and it writes utterly smoothly. It's a really, really nice really smooth writing nib. Some beautiful scroll work on there. No breather hole that we can see. It's a number five sized nib. Here's a Lamy Safari nib. As a comparison. What else do I have? Yeah, maybe again the, the nib of the Pelican M400 here. That's a little larger. Was a little nib comparison here. Let's open up the pen. It's a cartridge converter filler, 140 euro. You expect it to come with a com converter and it does. Comes with a Schmidt converter that fits really nice and snugly in the snug in that section here. As you can of course also see, it's a standard international size. So you can of course put in standard international cartridges. The short ones will definitely fit. Not sure if the long ones will fit. Small rubber O-ring here makes the whole thing sit really nice and tight. And what you do also see, which is also super cool and nice and also part of the concept of the pen, is its brass. So it does pick up patina, which is nice. So it will, the brass will irregularly darken over time, make it more part of you and all that kind of thing. And if you don't like that, if you want to have it back nice and shiny and all that, you can always use some polishing oil or something like that. And then you get the brass out again. Um, something that I also really like about the pen and that speaks about the attention for detail. It's something that the Caron Dash, for example, didn't have and it really annoys me. The Caron Dash closes somehow in a way at times that you don't have the flat side of that. Uh, <laughs> now it happened again. Uh, octagonal, hexagonal barrel, of course, aligned with the flat side of the nib, which I then find something to be pretty annoying if you have the pen laying on the desk, something like that, right? I'd hate that. Uh, and that's what the uh, Caron Dash pen does, for instance. Not so this beautiful Y Studio pen here, it just aligns super flush with the nib. And what it also does, it, it always has the logo that is, of course, not very lefty inclusive. We've said that, but it has the logo also aligned with the nib. So logo, flat side, always aligns with the nib. Super nice. Great compliments, great attention to detail. That is something that I love. When I see pens being made, such nice 
attention to detail before we hop into a writing sample of this knife and smooth writing pen by the way something that i also didn't like about the Carandash is that the cap really rotates here on the section you can rotate the cap here as well but it will basically not happen by itself you really need to exert some energy to rotate rotate that barrel let's do a quick size comparison to my standard size reference panel Ami Safari before we hop into a writing sample and capped I would say it's safe to say that they're the same in length. Let's uncap them and look at what that looks like. We now have a slightly shorter pen with the Y Studio and because maybe not everybody has a M400 Pelican M400 or a Blackwing pencil home Let's compare the sections of these two here. Lami Safari is probably the more common instrument that people will have home. And you see the Lami Safari does also have a wider section than this fairly slim section pen here. Last but not least, writing sample. This pen does write ah, really nice. It is inked with Diamine Blue Black which sort of those days, uh, now the nib dried up a little bit because it was uncapped so long, that normally doesn't happen. Diamond Blue Bag became my sort of go-to reviewing ink, so to speak, those days. So we go with the Y Studio. Brushing fountain pen. We do here have a fine steel nib. Writes really smooth with a tad of feedback, but it's not a very noticeable feedback. Just a little bit feedback, it, but it's, it's definitely more on the glassy smooth than on the feedbacky smooth side. Just enough feedback to let you know that you're writing. Um, wetness. This paper here is not very absorbent that I'm using here today. Uh, you still see even that ink up here was still pretty wet. So I would say it is a medium wet pen. It's definitely not a dry pen. It is also not a gusher, but for the fine line that it lays down, and that is really a true fine nib, um, very nice. It's an overall very nice pen, a very nice package. If you're drawn to those kind of things of the customizing and the minimalism and all that kind of thing, I think that's a pen worth looking at. Before we wrap it up, I would like to again thank Kohesi for having sent me this pen to make this review and content possible. Thanks for watching my friends and I'll see you at the next review. Bye bye.